In this video, I'm going to show you how to solve the Alex problem using the general properties of reaction enthalpy. In this problem, you'll be given a balanced chemical equation and a delta H value. Then you'll be given three similar equations and asked to come up with their delta H values. All of these equations are going to be very similar to the original equation. You'll notice that they have the same reactants and the same products, although they might be in the reverse order. When you're coming up with the new value of delta H for any one of these equations, all that you need to do is compare this equation to the original. Whatever changes have been made to this equation, you'll make the same changes to the value of delta H. For example, in this equation right here, we can see that all of the stoichiometric coefficients have been multiplied by three. And that means that we're going to multiply the value of delta H by three. So whatever we do to change the chemical equation, we're going to do the exact same thing to the value of delta H. Now this Alex problem says that we want our answers in the nearest, uh, rounded to the nearest kilojoules per mole. And so that means this is going to be negative 5589 kilojoules. And then of course you wanna make sure that you are paying attention to the signs of the value of delta H. Let's take a look at the second one. So in this equation, we have made no changes to the stoichiometric coefficients at all. So we don't need to multiply the value of delta H. But in this equation, we have reversed the position of the reactants and the products. When you reverse the position of the reactants and the products, the value of delta H reverses in sign. So our delta H value for the original equation was negative, and that means that this equation, it will be positive. And then let's take a look at the last one we have here. In this last one, we've done two things. So we've multiplied the stoichiometric coefficient by two. All of these coefficients have been multiplied by two, and we've also reversed the reaction. So this means that we need to reverse the sign of delta H, and we also need to multiply the value of delta H by two. And this gives us a positive 3726 kilojoules.